Welcome to this short presentation about the RQA On Demand webcast. That's the RQA Research Quality Association webcast, which they produced on the new EU clinical trial regulation 536-2014. The uh, RQA has produced a On Demand webcast and as I said, it's about the EU clinical trials regulation. It's about the final document, which has only just been uh, brought out. And it's been produced by the RQA GCP committee. This webcast has been produced by the RC RQA uh, GCP committee. And it's a heads up on the GCP aspects of this new clinical trial regulation. And the RQA uh, uh, on demand webcast was produced in June 2014. So it's arrived at last, the new regulation for Europe. It's been long awaited. There was a draft in 2012 and then many months went by. 700 amendments were proposed and eventually a new draft suddenly arrived on the 20th of December 2013. And this was said to be a, a final draft. It actually did go to Parliament. A few more changes were made and by April 2014, this was approved by both Parliament and the EU Council. Most importantly of all is that it was published in the official journal of the European Union on the 27th of May 2014. So this is what the regulation looks like. As, as I said, it's called 536-2014. Uh, There's an awful lot of detail in there. There's a lot of information. But what the RQA webcast concentrates on is some of the GCP aspects, particularly inspection and audit finding risks. Now, what do they mean by that? Well, there's an awful lot of new things in the new regulation. This regulation replaces the old clinical trials directive 20 ec that was brought in and, and came into force in 2004 to try and harmonize clinical trials across europe but it has a lot had a lot of difficulties now there's a new regulation and that new regulation brings in lots of new things that weren't a requirement before so these represent things that uh, inspectors may actually raise as inspection findings. So they present a new risk and we need to look out for them. And the RQA on demand webcast particularly looks at those new inspection finding risks. So why was a regulation created? Well, it was said that Europe was losing some of its share of research. In fact, a survey had found that there was a drop of 25% of the amount of clinical research being done in Europe since the uh, clinical trials uh, directive was brought in. The new regulation is supposed to be ensuring that the European Union remains a, an attractive place to do research, to bringing research into the European Union. It's supposed to simplify and harmonize. And if you watch the whole of the RQA um, webcast, <clears throat> you'll see how the new system for application of clinical trials uh, does exactly that. It does harmonize and simplifies. But most importantly of all, the regulation <clears throat> is binding in its entirety and directly applicable in all member states of the European Union. Now, why is that important? Well, a lot of people said that the clinical trials directive failed uh, to make everything unified because many member states added things when they came to enact the clinical trials directive into their local laws. This was often called gold plating. Gold plating meaning that you had new requirements and expectations. Well, the regulation makes sure that cannot happen because each country must enact the regulation in its entirety into their law and they're not allowed to take anything away from it or add anything to it. So let's start at the very beginning. 
of this new regulation. The very first uh, clause is called whereas one and I think it's it sets the scene for the whole of clinical research uh, and GCP standards. It says that in a clinical trial the right, safety, dignity and well-being of subjects should be protected. It also says that data generated should be reliable and robust. We'll come back to that in a moment. And also they've added in another GCP principle underneath that saying the interest of the subject should always take priority over all other interests. And for instance in ICH E6, ICH GCP, it says that the interest of the subject should take priority over the interests of science. Well this says over the over all other interests, the interest of the subject should take precedence. Let's just go back to those buzzwords now. You'll find they appear a lot in the clinical trial regulation. Data generated should be reliable and robust. Previous um, thing, uh, legislation such as the clinical trials directive it says that data should be uh, accurate, <clears throat> it should, should, should be credible and so on. But now they're pushing, I think, a little bit further. They're saying it must be reliable and robust. And I think they're going to be, we're going to be finding a lot of inspection findings based upon just how robust uh, the data is. So that's something to look out for. What I say is you really should go and look at the uh, new RQA on-demand webcast. It was prepared uh, by the RQA GCP committee. It has 48 slides, so it's a lot longer than this introduction. It lasts uh, just a little over 60 minutes. It specifically looks at the future inspection and audit finding risks. Uh, it also looks at how protocols might have to change to avoid problems. Now there's new a new uh, regulation and where the challenges with serious breaches of GCP and urgent safety measures might be. Now this is a very big change uh, from previous legislation and across the whole of the European Union there will now be uh, a requirement to report serious breaches of GCP and that is going to have a big impact so you need to know about that. There are changes to the definition of GCP. They're not very big, but it's, uh, it is interesting that they have changed. And there's going to be a requirement uh, for sponsors to report third country inspections of um, studies going on in the European Union. And that's a new requirement. There's some changes to consent and the requirements for consent. And the new regulation has risk adaption throughout it. There's lots of uh, places where risk adaption comes in and, and you'll see that on the uh, on-demand webcast if you uh, look at it. And it covers much more of course. So if you do want to purchase the RQA on-demand webcast about the new clinical trials regulation you need to go to www.therqa.com and on the home page you'll see a button for on-demand webcasts and that's where you'll find it. But also there's lots of other things on the RQA website and you can look at uh, lots of other things there that are maybe of interest.